Hi, this is Russell Stanner from teachertrainingvideos.com and this is an advanced set of training videos about working with Socrative. And I'm gonna do things like show you the space race model, the ticket model, I'm gonna look at the data that Socrative uh, produces, I'm gonna look at sharing Socratives, and I'm also gonna look at the, some of the editing options. If you don't know anything about Socrative, please come to my website, teachertrainingvideos.com. There's a newsletter that you can sign up to, but you don't have to, just close here. Go to mobile technology, and first of all, before you watch the advanced set of videos, watch these ones here. So, creative ideal for mobile devices. Okay, that's an introduction into using Socrative. And then afterwards, you can watch these advanced videos. So, let's get straight in now with the advanced videos. So I'm going to look at, first of all, some of the different quiz types, for example, the space race and how that differs from a quiz. And I'm also going to look at what they call the exit ticket. I'm then going to look at the data. So when students do activities, you can download data and look at it and talk a little bit about how you could use that data. data. Thirdly, I'm going to look at some of the editing options because there are a variety of options within Socrative and the way that you can edit and change your quizzes, etc. And then lastly, I'm going to look at sharing Socrative because you're are able to share your Socratives and create them and share them with other teachers and they can do the same. So very quick set of videos but hopefully these will take you through some of the advanced features in Socrative. Let's get started straight away. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at the space race option. When you make a quiz you can have the option of playing it in space race. Space race tends to work best if you don't use short answer questions because otherwise it means that people have got to use their mobiles to write in their answer. So when you do space race, the best thing is to limit it to multiple choice and true or false questions. Um, I'm gonna give you an example here. So I'm gonna click on this one here, copy of superstition about dreams, click on next, and it's gonna ask me for a few settings. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create five groups. If I've got, say for example, students in the class and I give them five, I put them into five groups, then one person in each group needs to log on with their computer, and they will automatically be given a group. This simply is a question of what uh, you're gonna use, whether it's gonna be a bear or a rocket, what icon you're gonna use in the race. I'm gonna choose uh, that we all have rockets. Here, I'm gonna require the name of one of the users. As I said, the easiest way to do it is that the students are working in groups and just one person in the group. I'm assuming here that we've got five groups. Leave these settings, settings the same, click on start. Now, the, you've got here, you can see the five different spaceships and we're ready to start the game. But obviously now the students need to log in. They will need to go to Socrative student and put this code in. So let's quickly see what the student sees. So the student needs to go to a Socrative student and simply write in the room num name and then afterwards to put in the name. So simply the room name is always here at the top of the screen. This one's TDDRL1SQ. So quickly coming back here, let's write that in. I simply then click on join. Then uh, I've got the room note wrong. wrong. Let me check. Okay, put the right name in and then that's gonna work now and then put the, my name, so I'm gonna write Russell and simply that comes into room. Now we're automatically, each team will automatically be given a color. So I immediately know by looking at the screen that the teacher is projected that I'm in the blue rocket and obviously any of the students that are gonna be working with me. So as I begin to answer the cut question, so I'm gonna click on the first one here and submit my answer. Uh, it gives me some feedback, and in this case, I was correct. And then I move on to the next question, and I do the second one, and this one I've got wrong, and I move on and do the third one. Now, as I said, it works best if you're doing multiple choice questions simply because of the way that uh, you are normally working with your mobile, and it's much easier to click on the answer rather than have to write something in. Let's have a quick look now at what the teacher is seeing. On the screen, the teacher can see that the blue group is moving ahead. Obviously, these groups haven't started because no one's logged in yet, but as soon as they do log in, they will be able to start the activity. So this is how a space race works. Basically, the idea is that the teacher would project this onto the screen so the students can see how quickly they're winning. So one of the important things is, when you're doing a space race, think how many groups you are gonna have 
and then one person in each group needs to log in. Just one person in each group needs to log in and they will automatically be allocated a color and then they will know who they are and they'll see their rocket racing across the screen. So that is the basics of working with the space race mode. Now the next thing I want to explain is what is an exit ticket. Well an exit ticket is actually a kind of default quiz that's already created that you use at the end of a class. And let's just very quickly click on it. So it will open up and it normally has three questions. And let's quickly now look at then what the students see when you launch the uh, exit ticket. So if we jump into student view, right in our names, you'll see that first of all, it asks you how, lo how you got on with the material. So I'm gonna say I totally got it. Secondly, it, ha it asks you to write about what you learned today. I learned about Socrative, for example. And then the third one, interestingly, normally the teacher asks a question orally in the class and the students write their answer here. So I write answer here. And that is it. Simply done. You've now done your exit ticket. So it's very much about feedback. It's not something I've used very often. Uh, I can obviously see that it's got some possible uses. I think I would normally do a longer quiz if I wanted to work this way, but it's a very quick way of getting feedback from students. If we now come back, we actually uh, can see the answers that the students have put in. And uh, we've got a few options here. The first thing is if you click underneath you can actually see all the answers. Now, in this case, we've only got one answer, but there would actually be lots and lots and lots of answers here if you had more students in the room. So clicking in this area here will show you the oral input or the text input that the students added. And the same here. And we can see that the answer has been written in. Okay, so it's that's what you can do as a quick way of collecting feedback from your students. But normally, remember, the last question, the third question, you would ask it orally, and then the students would write their answer. Now, we can also, of course, collect this as data. So one other possibility, if we click on finish, is this is to launch another quiz. But here, for example, we have got the option to get the report. Now, if we view the chart, that's actually going to take us back to here anyway. OK, so if we click on reports, the one that we're interested in, this one here. Now, we can actually down this lo download this. Um, we can do individual ones, we can do specific uh, one, or we can do an Excel for the whole class. And then what you would normally do is click on download, and then you get a report, and I can quickly open it up for you here. It's just opened up at the bottom of the screen, and that will give you basically the data. And in this particular case, of course, there's only uh, one student uh, who's um, written in their answers. We can see the name. Uh, we can see their first answer, second answer, and third answer. You, often what I do is pull that out, make it a little bit bigger. So that's really how the exit ticket works, because a lot of teachers are kind of confused and, and don't understand exactly what the exit ticket is. It's useful for feedback at the end of an activity, just to understand what the students have learned. And again, you can look at the data and make use of it. Now, Socrative actually gives you a lot of information about uh, the activities that your students have been doing. And it can be really good for understanding where you need to do more teaching, uh, where you need to give more support, what the students have understood. So if we click on reports, you got a kind of list of all the quizzes that you've ever activated. And in fact, you can delete them at any time. And I've just been going through and deleting some of them. But if I wanted to look at any of them, I can just simply click and it will bring up these three options. Now, this is really to download the report. And we're going to look at this in a minute. But let's start by just simply do it, clicking on view chart. And you'll come to this familiar chart. And what you can see here is where a student uh, got an answer wrong or got an answer right. So obviously, the red is, is showing that the answer was incorrect. So this could give us a really good inf indication of where we need to do additional work. So if we've got a high percentage of the students getting the answer correct, perhaps we don't need to teach that point. But if we've got a lower percentage, then perhaps we really do need to come in. So this can be very, very useful in terms of indicating how our students uh, are doing. Now, a little tip as well is that you can actually click down here. And it does give you a little bit more information as well, because it shows you the question 
and the four answers and it tells you how many of the students actually got that particular answer. Now in the case that they had written an answer then you'd actually see their written answers as well. So that can be really really useful. Now another thing that you can do though is click here on the reports and actually download that report. So this is slightly different. I'm going to click on this one and download it and just show you. It will depend on the type of quiz you're doing. In this case I was just using what we call multiple choice answer questions, not true or false or gap fill. But what I can see here is quite detailed is that it gives me a breakdown of, in fact this is perhaps too big to look at, but it gives me a breakdown to see exactly what students have answered, the number of correct answers, the total score, etc. In fact the best thing probably and you can see the individual names of the students. The best thing would mean me to do is to look at a perhaps smaller example. Let's go back and look at a smaller one where we can actually look at the data uh, more easily. Okay, so if we look at this one here, which is a quiz about UK cities. Now, this was actually just a test quiz that I was doing with a group of teachers. So what we can do here is go to the reports and click on Get Report. Again, we're going to download that report. And if we click and open that, hopefully we'll be able to follow this one a little bit clearer, a bit more clearly. We know we can actually always just make the uh, wider. So I can see the name of the team, one of the students in the team, and then I can see their score and I can see their answers. So I can really look look in detail at the answers that they got wrong or got right. So that can be really, really useful. And the answers that are in this lighter color here, well, they were correct. And the answers in this color here, well, they were wrong. So again, really useful in terms of gathering data about what your students answered. And that should help you to be able to decide where you need to do corrections or do additional teaching, etc. Now the third thing I want to talk about is sharing your Socrative. This is really easy. First thing, if you go to your quizzes and you click sorry on your quizzes and you want to uh, import someone else's Socrative, then you simply click on Add Quiz, click on Import, get the number, what we call the SOC number, and then click here. So you need the SOC number of another person's Socrative, and you can simply write it in here and then import it. Now, where does somebody find their SOC number? Well, if we click on any Socrative, if we click here on our quizzes and come down and choose Share, you'll see that every single quiz that you've created has got an SOC number. You simply share that number with another teacher. They paste that in and they can then import a copy of your quiz. Now, incidentally, when you actually start to make a quiz, so if I click on Add Quiz, Create New, you'll see that it immediately generates the SOC number for that new quiz. Okay, so that is how you can share Socratives with other teachers or you can receive Socratives from other teachers. Okay, the final thing that I want to go through is just simply a, a few points about editing and deleting and the tidying up of your quizzes. First of all, if you click on any of your quizzes and you want to delete any of them, or you simply can click uh, on any of them and just click, click on the delete button and that quiz will then be deleted, okay? And that's one way of quickly getting rid of quizzes. And as you see, I've built up quite a number of quizzes now through using Socrative. Obviously, some of your quizzes you're gonna to wanna to keep. You can, of course, make a copy of a quiz anytime here by simply clicking here, and that will make a duplicate copy. You can rename your quiz simply by doing that. Now, it may be at some times you actually wanna edit your quizzes. You wanna go in and add questions to a quiz. How do you do that? All you need to do is to make your in quiz mode here, click on the quiz, click on the quiz, and you'll notice that straight away it allows you to add more questions and you can then begin to delete any questions. You can move a question up in its order. So for example, if I wanted that one to come up one higher or one further down or I'll duplicate a question. So very, very easy to come into your quiz and to edit questions that are in the quiz, including the name of the quiz, etc. So really, really lots of options and simple as that. Two things to point out because some people get a little bit confused. From quizzes here, if you click on the quiz, it will bring you into the edit mode and you can begin to edit mode. If you're in the reports mode and you click on a quiz, it's going to offer you the option to look at the report. Normally the way you look at it is through viewing the chart or remember you can also click on a quiz in reports mode and of course download a report. 
Hopefully that's helped you. That's covered some of the key advanced features in using Socrative. Great tool, very easy to use, and I think the students enjoy using it a lot. Hi, this is Russell Stanard from teachertrainingvideos.com. Please come to teachertrainingvideos.com. Uh, lots more free videos showing you loads of different technologies that you can use in your teaching and learning. There's a newsletter that you can sign up to. It has about 25,000 subscribers, and I show you the latest videos and the latest technologies I've come across. But you don't have to sign up. You can just click that button there, and then you've got access to all this content. Now, you've been watching a video about Socrative. You might be interested in other mobile technologies like Kahoot, maybe Quizlet. Click on Mobile Technology, and you've got a whole uh, series of different videos about different technologies, including Kahoot and Quizlet. Very popular section is Russell's five minute blog. These are very quick and short videos about using different technologies in your teaching and learning and they really give you a quick summary of what those technologies do. And finally, you might be interested in following me on my YouTube channel uh, because I add even more videos onto the YouTube channel than you'll find on the website. I really hope that you find some of this content useful. Thank you very much.